Welcome to Church Unleashed, a Lutheran ministry that wants you to know that you are unconditionally loved by God. We know that faith can often seem like a wrestling match, life overwhelming and hope hard to find. Worship gives us a chance to pray, hear sacred stories, rest in love, and be turned outward to prepare for the week ahead. So join us every week, either on TV or online. Take a deep breath as we begin worship together. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Church Unleashed. I'm Pastor Roger. That makes me Pastor Steve. Pastor Jeremiah is going to be with us in a little bit because we're still here at Lake Chautauqua Lutheran Center, and we're still focusing on our favorite sermons, our pastor's favorite text, whatever yep. it is, either one that they wrote or stole or something like that. Yeah, but, who is the pastor today? Well, guess what? It's <gasps> actually Pastor Jeremiah, oh. and he's going to be talking about la kind of languages and translations. Do you speak any other languages? I don't. I speak only one language, but when I was studying to be a singer, I learned how to sing in a whole bunch of different nice. languages. You got any like Latin-y things you could do? Oh, yeah, sure, Latin. Uh, so, uh, let's see. I'll uh, translate for the people when you say. <laughs> you go, let's go. Let's Ready? see. Latin. Uh, uh, Quia feci God di is good. Maga. God is good. Qui po ho 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 ho. I like to sing. Ho 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 ho
I think the most amazing thing that's happened on camp is I've faced so many fears here, like the climbing tower. Before I did the climbing tower zip line, I was terrified of doing it. And then I did it, and I was like, wow, I wish I could just do this all day. It felt good because it, it, was, it turned out to be my favorite thing to do as like an activity on camp. In my like personal development and growth, the most expedited periods of time were at camp. Like I am who I am very specifically because of things that happened at camp and my time spent there. We would leave and I just remember singing songs in the back of my mom's car with my friend. To like probably so annoying, but we were screaming at the top of our lungs, like all the little songs that we would sing and all the skits that they would do and all the funny things that camp counselors would do. What I like is how I feel when I'm here, that I get to be myself, that I get to be with other people who are being themselves and how natural that all feels. I think it's so important to have them have the opportunity to be by themselves and just be a person without being connected to their parents. You get to work out how you exist in the world as an individual. Best camp ever. LCLC oh, yeah. baby. Come join. Best summer of your life. More than half of my friends are from camp. I think of how many friends I have like from that time in my life and through the ups and the downs and they're all just still there. The best part of campus the community it brings like everyone's so connected and together and on the same page and you're getting so many different people with so many different backgrounds coming together and sharing experience together that you wouldn't typically get elsewhere I think as Lutherans, the thing that we don't sh that we don't necessarily always talk enough about but is the foundation of who we are is grace. God loves us no matter who we are and no matter who we're trying to understand the world to be. We have a theological foundation for the directors of camp that they're then bringing in and handing over to the counselors. So they're living a relational God as they're learning the structure of what it means to also just be a 24-7 caregiver for a week in a kid's life. We're giving them all the safety and all the counseling things, but we are talking and we are embedding theology of, of grace and love and acceptance into their everyday life so that they're living and breathing and passing that on to our kids. So many people have heard or think they're gonna hear is God loves you if you do X, Y, Z. And what they get here is God loves you just the way you are. The person you are with all your quirks and eccentricities, that God loves that you. You don't need to be someone else in order for God to love you. The counselors and such try to make it funner and is that a word? <laughs> Into the dictionary. Um. Today's gospel reading, one of my favorites, comes from the 28th chapter of Matthew. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Jesus came and said to them, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always till the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. This morning's gospel reading, not only is it one of my favorites, but I think it is so critical, so important to the whole reason why we gather for worship each and every morning. And so I was wondering, would you indulge me if I read it again, but with a slightly different translation. So like after Jesus had his glow up and was almost canceled, The 11 homies that roll with him went to this chill spot in Galilee where Jesus told them to meet up. When they peeped him, they were like shook, but also totally down to vibe with him. But you know, some still found it all a little sus. Eh, not so sure. But when Jesus came through and was like, yo, listen up, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me, fam. Like it's been handed over to me, no cap. So like, go out there and help everyone to be my stands. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to keep it real, you know? Follow all the stuff I've been teaching you and don't sweat it. I'll be rolling with you always till the world goes kaput. Smiley emoji, prayer emoji. Any guesses on what that translation was? It was an AI-generated Gen Z translation of our scripture passage. Although I would have also accepted the answers cringy, awkward, or big yikes. I offer this translation as an over-the-top reminder of the calling we hear in this passage, often called the Great Commission. The calling to go make disciples or stands. A message we should wrestle with all the time, but particularly when we gather for worship because all too often our worship services are focused on gathering people in, on just celebrating what God has done without hearing the call to remember to go make disciples. Today is for naming and holding that tension. A celebration of the love that's been shared in our communities and a recommitment to sharing the love of God and a recommitment to that calling to go make disciples, to go and share the love of God. So, you know what? Why don't we go right now? Now, this is not a commitment without some challenges. Rising inflation makes the cost of paying for big buildings and paying for staff even more expensive. The radical polarized nature of the country in which we live make saying anything of consequence risky for fear of somebody might be upset with something you say and leave forever. Sprinkle into that that one third of all millennials and Gen Z now identify as nuns. That's right, here in the United States of America, one third of all people ages 11 to 43, when asked their religious affiliation, check the box, none. Now, we should acknowledge that no generation is a monolith. No group all thinks the same. Nevertheless, there are some trends that I find incredibly helpful and hopeful. When I say helpful, you say hopeful, helpful, hopeful, helpful, hopeful, helpful, hopeful. Did you know that according to United Way survey, Gen Z is far more passionate about LGBTQ rights, racial and gender equality. They are far more concerned about the environment, access to healthcare, gun control, access to education and criminal justice reform more than any other generation including my own. Let me make it plain, folks. The youngest generation here in America is more concerned with the practical consequences of love thy neighbor more than any other generation. The kids are all right. I hear what this generation is passionate about and I think to myself, these sound like things Jesus would really care about. 
For was Jesus not focused on healing, making people whole, restoring communities, and saving? Actions done by Christ to point to the coming kingdom of God. Why then the disconnect between this generation, passionate about loving neighbor and yet identifying as having no religious affiliation at all? Where's the disconnect? Now, rather than pointing fingers and getting defensive, I think we have to look within. I propose that we as the church have failed or at least significantly neglected our calling to translate the gospel. I don't mean translate the gospel into cringy AI-generated versions. I mean translate the gospel into lives of consequence. Lives of faith that make a difference into church communities who truly show up and are present in the lives of their neighbors with the love of Jesus. We have struggled to make clear the free gift of God's grace for all. We have struggled to actually raise up disciples who go, who aren't just gathered inside of sanctuaries on Sunday mornings, but who are out in the world. can seem a little depressing when you look around. You hear about churches closing left and right. Maybe even people in your own family who don't have connections to faith communities. But there is help and hope. There is help and hope in our gospel reading today. When I say helpful, you say hopeful, helpful, hopeful, helpful, hopeful, helpful, hopeful. The help and the hope comes in the very last verse. Jesus says, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Folks, this is not about correct beliefs or getting everyone to think the same. This is about living the life of faith, the way of love, grace, and mercy that Jesus embodied in his life, death, and resurrection. We might question or doubt our own abilities as individuals, or maybe even as the church, to truly make a difference, might doubt our abilities to go. But Jesus doesn't. He calls this broken group of disciples, he calls this broken group of disciples sitting on their couches watching this service right now. He has called and entrusted you, me, all of Church Unleashed to go. Now let's pay particular attention to what's not mentioned in the passage. Jesus doesn't say a word about church. He doesn't say anything about building big buildings. He doesn't say worship has to be at a specific time or in a particular place even. He just says, go make disciples. What if the way we are called to go make disciples looks very different from the last hundred years? What if it looks radically different than even the last hundred days? I wonder how that makes us feel. Maybe scared? Excited? Feeling a little sus? Not all that different than how the disciples felt way back 2,000 years ago on that mountaintop. Helpful Hopeful, helpful, hopeful, helpful, hopeful. So how will we translate our faith? Not just well into the future, but in the next few days and weeks. How will we raise up others in the radical way of Jesus' unconditional love in a way that is helpful and hopeful and makes the whole world whole? How will we make room for the Spirit to lead us forward and to lead us to go. I don't know, but I am confident that it begins where the Gospel of Matthew ends. For I am with you always. And that is good news in any translation. So let's go with that promise. Amen. Let's join together and confess the faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we invite you to join us as we take a deep breath. And we join together in a time of prayer. Lord, thank you for this season of summer. As we turn our attention now to the fall, to getting back to school and to some regular routines in our households, Send your spirit of patience to be with us. Send your spirit of blessing, especially on teachers and students getting back to work. Give them the, the strength and the courage and the wisdom that they need to, to start the year off well. That, that we all might grow in wisdom and faith throughout this coming year. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Christ, our Redeemer, the one who tells us to go help to send your church. Not with cringy translations, but to live authentic lives of discipleship that clearly communicate the vastness and wideness of your love, of your grace, and of your mercy. Help us to reach out and to go. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Holy Spirit, as we sit around this campfire and think about this past summer, I think about all the kids that came to this camp. I think about the times when I was a kid and was at this campfire and the folks that passed down the faith here this summer and in my life and all of our lives. We just thank you for those saints, those who have gone before us into your kingdom and those who are still with us in this kingdom. And thank you for the opportunity to be faith sharers as well. So we ask you also to bless those folks uh, that are hurting today, that are, are feeling disconnected from you, folks that are battling, whether it's uh, health or mental health or, or just addictions, what, whatever it is, Lord, we know that you are the healer of every ill, and so we ask you to heal the folks that we give to you now at this time. And we thank you for hearing our prayers. It's into your hands that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for yeah, those absolutely. prayers, guys, and thank you for praying with us. It is now time for our favorite time. It is mail time. time. And honestly, it wasn't mail that I want to talk about today. It was uh, food deliveries, and we received so many donations this summer. Uh, a, a reminder that if you feel as if your donation was $50 or more, we received a lot of anonymous donations yeah. at Zion. Um, we still have uh, generously donated Delta Sonic gift cards for that food drive we did this summer. Um, we want to hear from you. We want you to write us a letter and tell us, hey, I was the one that dropped that food off and we would love to put one of those gift cards in the mail for you. So that is, that, that's our mail time today. Not a, not a mail delivery, a food delivery. Food delivery. And thank you. I'm always so humbled by your generosity, whether it's delivering food or making donations that make 
this ministry possible, of bringing these worship services to you each and every week, whether it's online or on TV. We couldn't do it without your partnership in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So whether you want send donations to 2 Wallace Ave or you continue to support us with your prayers, we just want to say thank you. And thank you for your sermon today. Uh, I hope you know, uh, first of all, you've got some ash on your forehead you. there. Uh, there's Long a lot of behind holiday. the scenes stuff that happens when we do these <laughs> worship services. While Pastor Jeremiah was preaching at the top of the road, uh, you know, looking like he's gonna go, we had the mail truck come by. We had a tractor in the background. Maybe some uh. people noticed that. We had uh, the semi-tractor trailer almost clip us as he pulled in the driveway. So thank you for staying safe and uh, powering through on your message. We hope that you too will power through sharing the message. As you go on your way today, may the Lord go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating and rejoicing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all God's people said. Amen. 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 May you be unleashed. Unleashed into the world to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Just a Stop.